Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship and welcome back into my office. Yes, this is not exactly the way that we had hoped things would run or the thing way things would turn out. And so I just want to address that just for a moment. First of all, this is not the end of the story. We do feel like it's best to take, or at least I feel like it's best for us to take a little bit of a break. Um, the fact is the numbers have gone crazy. We have never had as many cases in Liberty County. And if you're like me, you have an awful lot of friends right now that are either sick or um, are recovering from being sick. And yes, we all know at least one person that is much more than just sick. The fact is, is that as I was thinking about this uh, this week, whether or not I had made the right choice, and I appreciate the guidance that was given me from the administrative cabinet, the council of the church, and from all those who I'd asked, um, and especially from God, because um, I honestly feel like that that prayers were answered, that he spoke about what should happen. And the way that he did that for me was, I began to think about a story in the Bible that I honestly had not thought about in a long time. And it has to do with the Exodus, um, those 40 years that uh, the Jewish people walked in faith with God until the conquest of Israel. And I especially thought of manna, that substance that God provided to them for them to be able to survive. And I got to think about the fact that how much God has provided for us over this past year and a half. And that while this setback is sad, um, it's sad for all of us. I would much rather be with you right now, worshiping inside of our sanctuary. The fact is that God has provided a way for us to be able to worship together. And I know even for those of you that have been worshiping from home, there's just something awesome and great about thinking about all of our connections returning back into that place, Mount Olivet. But the fact is, is that place is not what centers our worship. God is what centers our worship. And yes, while many of us have enjoyed being back in the sanctuary, and now we are where we are, wherever that might be, we get to worship God together still. And God still provides. God still gives us that which we need every day to be able to make it to the next day. And more than that, to be able to celebrate the day that we're in. So I pray that today, this worship service is a celebration of who God is and what God has done in our lives. I pray that you thank him for giving us this ability to be able to be together. And I pray that we would celebrate who God is in our lives as we pray for all of those right now that are quite honestly fighting for theirs. As we come together, as we celebrate together, as we remember how blessed we are, let us not forget those who are in pain right now. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 through 15. We pray for those that are in need. Bertie and Riley Parrott, Betty Rogers, Candy Rogers, Cassie Niles, Cheryl Brett, Cheryl McKenzie, Clay Godley, Craig Med Jr., Dana Harp, Daniel Ritchie, Dean Carter, Dolores Marchant, Eddie Walden, Faye Bowen, Heather Torres, Jan Waters, Jason Rogers, Jeff Anderson, Jennifer Dean, Jessica Bland, Jesse Jones, Karen French, Kinsley O'Berry, Kyle and Matricia Medina, Lacey Straley, Laura Smith, Marina Elena, Marilyn Crowley, Mark Manning, Melanie Collins, Michael Ryan, Pat Bowen, Penny Mahoney, Roberta Ryan, Rodney Riley, Rufus Clark, Cheryl Walden, Vilvin, William Gilbert, 
the family of Per O'Brien, the family of Susan Gerald, the family of Susan Todd, the family of the Reverend Henry Franklin Baysmore, Jr. We pray for the 409 people in Liberty County who caught COVID-19 over the last two weeks. For the families of the 67 Liberty County citizens that have died of COVID-19. For the over 73 students in Liberty County who currently have COVID-19. For the over 739 students in Liberty County who are quarantined. For the over 16 LCSS staff members who have COVID-19. For the over 25 LCSS staff members who are quarantined. For the people of Haiti, for the people of Afghanistan, for health workers, for police officers, for firefighters, for paramedics, for teachers, for those who serve the military and their families, for those imprisoned, for those in spiritual distress, for our leaders, for our pastor, for those suffering from forest fires, for those unnamed or unknown. We ask that the Lord hear our prayers, and we know that he does hear them. For all of these things, we lift up our prayers to heaven, praying those words that Jesus Christ taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alone, 
Good morning, everybody. I hope that you all had a great week. I know by now that most of us are back in school, and I certainly hope that you have had an awesome time with wonderful teachers and great friends. Well, we're back at home this week. For some reason, it just doesn't seem right to wake up on a Sunday morning and not get ready for church. When I was little, Sunday mornings were so special. My daddy would cook me breakfast, my favorite oatmeal toast and bacon, and my mommy would pick out beautiful dresses for me to wear, and she would curl my hair and make me feel pretty. And then we'd all get in the car, and we would ride together to Mount Olivet, where we would sing and praise with our church family. After church, we'd go to my granny and grand grand's house, and my granny would have prepared this wonderful Sunday family lunch, and we would spend time with my aunts and uncles and cousins. Then we would all come home and spend the rest of the day together getting ready for the week ahead. Sunday was definitely my favorite day of the week. It could be easy for us to think about how Sundays are now compared to how they used to be. We miss being able to gather in the church. We miss being able to see our church family. We could be sad that we have to worship at home for right now instead of in our sanctuary. I think, though, that there are special things we can do in our homes to make Sunday mornings special no matter where we have to worship. Matthew 18, 20 says, For where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Now, this doesn't mean that if you're by yourself, God isn't with you. We know God is with us all the time. It simply means that when we come together to worship, even if that has to be through the internet or through our phones or through our TVs, we can call it church. Isn't that pretty awesome? See, the church isn't the building that we worship in with the pretty windows and the altar at the front. It's wherever we stop and give glory to God. The church could even be your living room. Let's say a prayer together. Dear God, Thank you for your promise to always be with us. The world can be a pretty scary place, God, especially now when we can't gather together. We're grateful to be joined in spirit to worship you. Help us to remember the church is not the building, but is wherever you are. And since you are within us, we are the church. Amen. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Glad you, Lord. What have I ever done to deserve even one of the pleasures I've known? Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth loving you? Or the kindness you chose. Lord, help me, Jesus. I've wasted it. So help me, Jesus. I know what I
Let us join together as we prepare our hearts for worship with Sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. like the Roadrunner cartoons. Um, I don't know. That might not be politically correct anymore. Don't really care. The fact of it is is that um, they were funny, right? And and what's funny about them too is I think that may be where we kind of get the idea of needing warning labels on things because it always seemed like that no matter what he did and what he used, it always either blew up on his face or caused some sort of issue or some sort of problem for you. Um, Warning labels have actually gotten kind of crazy. Um, there's some that just amaze me. I remember not that long ago there being a big lawsuit against McDonald's because somebody was served a cup of coffee and got burned. And now all the McDonald's cups that serve coffee have on their warning uh, contents hot. <laughs> um, I would have kind of thought that was understood. Um, I was reading a, a thing that had a whole list of these kind of weird little warnings on there. Um, a box of bottle rockets that said, do not put in mouth. Um, a, a remote control for a TV that said, not dishwasher safe. Has anybody actually tried that? Anyone ever done that? Um, package of peanuts. If you look at it, it'll say on there, warning, may contain nuts. That, yeah, okay. Hair dryers. Hair dryers say on there, do not use in the shower. Have you ever known someone to try to use it? Well, if you did, you probably don't know them anymore, right? Um, how about, um, I don't know, a, a uh, Frisbee that says, warning, may contain small parts. Um, I don't, don't really get that. Portable strollers that tell you to take the baby out before you fold them up. I... You, you would think this would be something that would not be needed. People would understand to take the baby out first. Although I can remember being so tired um, as a new father that made me, I don't know, maybe I would need that warning before I did that. I'm not sure. Today, we're going to talk about a warning label. And it comes from the fifth chapter of Ephesians, beginning with the 15th verse. And here's what it says. It says, be careful then how you live not as unwise people but as wise making the most of the time because the days are evil so do not be foolish but understand what the will of the lord is do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery but be filled with the spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves singing and making melody to the lord in your hearts giving thanks to god the father at all times and for everything in the name of our lord jesus christ to me, this sounds almost like a warning label that should be put on a box that says Christian. Let's pray. Father God, as we turn now to you, I, I pray, Lord God, that we would feel connected to you. That we would realize it doesn't matter where we're at right now. We're reading God's word. We're studying your word. We're coming together and, and listening to an interpretation of that. And so I pray, Father God, that no matter where the person is hearing this, is that you would just come and, and 
correct any errors I make. Fix any words that come out that aren't correct. And that you allow the hearer to hear you. Now we just ask this in the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a lot going on in this passage. A lot that's talking to us as Christians about how we should live. And I'll be honest with you. Some things here right now that we could certainly use in the environment and the world that we live in right now. The first part of this is this simply this idea of being prepared. Now, you've heard me preach on being prepared before. To me, the idea of being prepared is very serious and very important. Um, ever since the days when I was a Boy Scout, um, I just really feel like that we live better and we live life better when we're prepared for what comes. In verses 15 and 16, Paul says, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. To me, that sounds like he's telling us to be prepared for what's to come. Now, I find this really interesting because in the midst of the church trying to make decisions about us, me, trying to make decisions about how to best to live my life, th this weekend, um, matter of fact, today is my anniversary, mine and Mary's anniversary. Um, it's also my son's birthday. And, and to be honest with you, we would much rather be out celebrating that and, 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 and being able to go out to dinner and a movie and all that good stuff. But quite honestly, right now, that just would not seem to be a wise thing to do. Interesting enough, when I announced that we weren't going to have uh, in-person church, that we would be online only for today, um, it's so funny because I received some communications that said, uh, thank you for your wisdom and for your leadership in the church. And then others that said things that, I'm paraphrasing here, but um, trying to make it sound like that I was afraid and I wasn't trusting God enough. And yet, in this scripture and so many others, I see God saying to be wise, to be prepared, to, to, to do what you should do to realize that no matter how bad the storm is and no matter how how the waves are no matter what is going on in our lives god's got this and we may not understand it and, and we may not know how to work it but god's got this and god wants to keep us safe god wants us to be able to do and, and there are times when we need to be risk takers when we need to be prepared to be risk takers and there are other times when God says, use the tools that I've given you and be prepared for where you're at right now and stay safe. I can tell you right now that if I was to go to the top of the Empire State Building and God commanded me to jump off of it, somehow miraculously he would save my life. But I also know that more than likely he wouldn't command me to do that. And that he would expect the wisdom that he has given me in my head to do differently, to be prepared to serve in a different way. In our daily walk with Christ, we're called to be ready, but not to be stupid. And I know that sounds bad, and I'm not trying to be political at all. I really am not. I respect both sides of everything that we debate about in this be it mask or attendance or eating or what we do or whatever the case may be trust me I am incredibly torn on this but I believe that God is telling us to be as prepared as we can to continue to serve him as best as we can I mean to me I practice I literally practice talking with a mask on you want to know why? Because I want to be able to be safe and be heard. That means preparation. You see, one of the ways that we can prepare is to read the manual of life. In verse 17, he says, So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do you know how we understand what the will of the Lord is? Is, is that we immerse ourselves in Scripture and we speak stay in touch with God I pray a lot a lot I imagine that 
If I was to do all my praying out loud, people would probably think that I've lost my mind. I talk to God a lot. Sometimes I hear him clearly and sometimes I don't, but it doesn't really matter because I just need to know what his will is. I need to be able to understand that. And the only way I can do that is for me to be near him. You know, there are times when my children come in and sit next to me and watch something on TV they don't care about at all. Maybe I'm watching a sports game or, or maybe I'm watching the news or, or maybe I'm doing something else that does not really interest them. But they do it because they want to be close to me. Mary, who probably hasn't had control of the remote control now for the last 30 some years, will oftentimes come in and sit down. If I'm watching a game or a, a something on, on a History Channel thing, she calls the Sleep Channel, she'll sit down and she'll read her book. She does it in the room with me because she just wants to be near. If we want to know what God's will is, we need to be wanting to be near Him. We do that through reading scripture. We do that through prayer. We do that by listening to what's going on around us. Because oftentimes God's voice is a whisper. And sometimes we need to listen better to hear it. Paul addresses this um, when he writes, Do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you're like, wait, wait, what are you talking about, John? Now you lost me. What are you talking about? Do not get drunk with wine. What does that have to do anything with this? You know what it means? It means stay connected with God. Some of us know what it means to be stay connected with alcohol. Or to be staying connected with drugs. Or staying connected with so many other things that draw us in and takes everything that we have. But Paul says, no, that's debauchery. Stay connected with God, with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Yes, y'all, I know that's hard to do sometimes, especially in the midst of this now. One of the challenges I have in, in this setting is, how do I impress on you how important it is for us to accept the Spirit of Jesus Christ to allow it to overcome us when we're not in a building that's designed to force that. You heard me, right? You've heard me talk about this before, about thin spaces. Our sanctuary is designed, it has one purpose, and that purpose is to bring us together and to create an environment in which we can feel closer to God. And that's hard to do sometimes when you're sitting in your living room or in your office or you're watching this online or if you're in the car traveling somewhere or whatever the case may be. But if we would remember to let go of the physical. I love the music, but we don't need it. I love the words, but we don't need it. What we need is the spirit of the living God. And it is simply within that realm that we can truly feel connected. It's when we allow that spirit to ride over us. So I would just say right now, just stop what you're doing and what you're thinking about. Maybe at this point you're thinking about, what am I going to do next? What, what meal is going to come next? Where am I going to go next? What's going to happen next? And let all that go. And just say, Lord, wash over me. In this place that I am, allow it to become a sanctuary for you. Wash over me. Allow me to let go of all that which is pulling me away from you. Wash over me, Lord, and allow me to forget the fact of how it hurts not to be with my friends. Wash over me, Lord. Connect me to you and allow me to realize that you've got this. That you've got this. See, in verse 19, Paul says simply, Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts. 
Why does he say this? He wants you to keep your focus. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's difficult for us to realize that the meaning of worship is not about a place or people or things. Sometimes it's hard for us to remember that worship is not just on Sundays, but on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays and Saturdays. It's not just about in the morning, but in the afternoon, the evening. It's about worshiping God always. It's about singing and laughing and loving and realizing that in each situation, even the hard ones, even the most difficult ones, even the painful ones, there is room for joy because there is room for Christ. There's an opportunity for connection. And in the midst of that, we should be so grateful for all that God has given us. Verse 20 says, Give thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, in the midst of all of this, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that we have an alternative. I'm grateful that we have a way to worship together. As I mentioned, I believe it was last week, <laughs> it's all kind of rum together. I'm grateful that I can have people that I can text or call that I know that will drop everything and pray for me or my concerns. I'm grateful that I serve a church that is loving and kind. I'm grateful that I have friends who love Jesus Christ and know how to live life while loving Jesus Christ. I'm grateful that I have children who are good people and who love Jesus. And yes, I am so very, very grateful that for all this time, God has given me a workmate, a friend, a comforter, and somebody who has shown me Christ in so many different ways. I'm grateful for Mary. And I'm also grateful for you, even if I don't know who you are, even if we've never met face to face. Because this morning you've given up or this afternoon or whenever it is you're watching this, you've given up a piece of your time in order to worship God. Not that you've done it to listen to me, but that you've decided that it's worth it to worship God. And if you're doing that, then you also are grateful for God. And for what God has done for you and for us. Friends, we're going to be back together soon. I honestly feel that. I don't think this will be an extended time away like it was earlier. I also know there's a lot of work to be done. A lot of praying to be done. I pray and ask that you would glorify God in the things that you say, in the way that you act. That you would reach out to first responders, to nurses and to doctors and to those that are working tirelessly for you. And if nothing else, just simply thank them. I pray that you will continue to pray for teachers and for school systems, for the difficult decisions that need to be made and for the dedication and love that people are showing right now. I've seen teachers that are sick at home, struggling to be able to get a word out that are still trying to teach their classes. I've seen people that are terrified what comes next and yet are still willing to come to work because they know their kids need them. I've seen folks that are refusing to take the vaccine for whatever reason and know that their health is at risk and yet they still come to work and do their jobs. In the end, we get to illustrate what being a Christian really means. I believe that we're doing that 
in the way that we meet, in the way that we worship, and the way we love each other. But I also believe that more importantly than all of those things, in order for us to seriously be prepared to to be able to continue to be close to God and staying connected, to keeping our focus on Him, and most especially for us to live gratefully means that we've got to do it on those in-between Sunday times. That we've got to continue to love each other. And if that means doing things a little bit differently, if that means working a little bit differently, living a little bit differently so that we can protect the vulnerable among us, that I'm willing to do. Ultimately, this is not painful. This is an opportunity to show people around us, and more importantly, our Lord and our Savior, that our love for Him is what drives us. And so I would say this, no matter what you believe, And no matter how you feel about the things going on around you, love first, complain later. This will not be for long. But this is what another opportunity for us to glorify God. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for reminding us that we need to We need to be concerned about some things. Not that we need to fear, but that we actually need to follow the wisdom you've given us. And so in the midst of this, attempting to be wise, I pray, Lord God, that you would help us to be able to see your path clearly. That you would remind us that we shouldn't just be coming to you on Sundays, but staying connected to you all week long. And that you would remember, in the midst of all that pulls us left and right, up and down, what drives us to the center is our connection with you. And the tug of war that's going on in other parts of our lives simply won't matter if as long as we stay connected to you. I just pray, Father, we remember that. In Christ's holy name I pray. Amen. Forever
this worship service but I pray truly pray it does not end your worship service or mine let's keep worshiping God for the rest of today and for this week no matter where you're at and what you're doing let's celebrate our connection with God our strength with God and allow others to be able to see that help others where you can love others always and most of all stay in love with God because he certainly loves you and I do too. I hope you have a good week. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to God, God be the glory. Great things he has done. So love.